Hey guys, what's happening? Just want to touch on a couple of quick variations of a technique that we use in the jog out system, which is our quad jump or back palm technique. All right. Normally you see it in forms like Dai Fa Fu Ken or Big Sudoi Tiger Fist, Fu Pao Ken, Tiger uh, Cougar Fist, or Q Sao, which is bridge hands. So it's basically this. What happens is we come from here, which is a Pak Sao BLG strike, and then Pak Sao and back palm strike or quad jump. So just this part. I'm going to look, uh, show you a couple variations, both from an offensive and defensive perspective. So my normal fighting stance for me is from the southpaw position, which means I have a right foot forward lead, my right hand lead, my jazz comes to my right, my cross comes to my left, lead hook here, rear hook here, lead uppercut here, rear uppercut here. All right, that said, if I'm dealing with someone from the orthodox position, from the orthodox position, that means they have a left foot lead, and they throw me a left jab from a defensive posture. And again, using this, but again, use your imagination, okay? Try to think outside the box. You can deflect and use it as a defense. So, if a jab comes at me, and I'm going to throw it in the same tempo that a jab is coming at me, which is a basic out and back technique, right? A jab is not going to stay out there too long. It's not overreaching, but it's just out and back, all right? So that said, I have to throw it in the same tempo. So when the punch comes in, I'm going to lean off to the side. So as I do my pox out here, I'm going to use the quad jump and hit the inside of the arm. This area is very sensitive. All right. So that's going to be sort of a warning shot, but it's also going to cause some damage. So again, the punch comes in, I'm going to shift over to my left. Again, I'm coming from the southpaw position. If you're coming orthodox, you would shift over to your right. But I'm dealing with a left jab, all right? So it's coming in. I'm going to shift over to my left. I'm going to catch here, pox out, and then strike his arm on the inside part here with the back palm strike. So again, when you look at it, I'm shifting over and strike here. And again, it comes out back. I'm not going to set up like this. I'm just going to keep my hands here, loose and natural, and shift over. If I want to add more force, I can move into the strike a little bit, all right? If the cross comes in, the right cross, I'm going to shift to my other side or to my right, block with my left, and execute the same technique, all right? So again, from here, shifting over and hitting and striking at the same time. So again, my face was covered a little bit, so let me turn this way. So I'm going to block here and strike here. And again, hitting the inside portion of the arm. You can do this technique and hit the back of the arm or going toward the tricep, but it's most effective if you hit the inside arm or going toward the bicep. All right. So dealing with the right cross, again, I'm still in the southpaw position. Hands up, chin down, shoulders down, relax. I'm going to shift over, catch, and hit simultaneously. It's got to be simultaneous. It can't be one, two. It should be together. All right. Offensive. This works best for a cross. A punch that's really coming to cross, you have to turn your entire torso, rotating from the waist and legs, and extend out and back. So it takes a little bit longer. So a cross takes double the time of a jab, because the jab only has half the distance to travel. A cross comes from here and extends all the way out. So that being said, I'm going to use half for D, and other half for offensive, but I'm going to strike the rib cage. I'm going to strike the rib cage. This works best in warmer weather like this, like summertime now. It really works well. So from this position, the cross comes in, I'm going to move in. This time I am going to move in toward my target. This is a little surprising. I could sit back, but I might run the risk of not making that contact. So as the cross comes in, I'm going to shift in and hit same time. Again, moving my head out of the way. And again, the reason why you want to move your head is because your hands can always misjudge distance and you might actually miss the block. So move your head gives you an extra buffer of protection. So again, the cross comes in. I'm dealing with a right cross. Dealing with a right cross. And I'm going to slide in and hit and drop low into sort of a kneeling stance, sort of a left climb on, but not really. And right in here and hit the ribs. So if I want to attack and he throws a cross and I hit and then he throws a jab, I can slip over to the other side and hit. So I'm one, two, here. So again, you look at it, 
Again. One here, one there. Again. They gotta come in the same time. They have to come in together. In the form, you'll see this and then and then this. One, two. But it's best if they come in one. It's one movement. Alright? Okay, guys. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. Everybody stay safe, stay healthy, be careful out there.